I have seen uh, without letting some big up the the details at all. They spent a lot of money. They bought one of the biggest software. They spent about more than half a million dollar. Eighteen months later, they blame the software. If the software is really hard to use and it doesn't give you the same experience as you would have in the business to consumer space, like when you go and purchase something off an e-commerce store as a consumer, then you're still going to struggle to get people to adopt that. So. I do think it's a fair criticism from the software companies sometimes when they say, you know, the reason your digital transformation has failed is because you haven't taken new people with you. Yes, up to the point. So very nice to be a T-shirt, man. Yes. You look awesome. You could be, it could be a model for us, right? This video is brought to you by us, SCM Dujo. We provide awesome courses, guides, best practices for supply chain community. Hi, folks. Uh, welcome to one more episode of Supply Chain Show. Today is a special episode with a special guest, James Mee from UK, who is a famous digital nomad. We have been connected on LinkedIn for some time, like two, three years, and it's always a pleasure when people say, "You know, good, I'm going to Dubai. Let's meet up and talk." And I uh, thought, what is the best time? I mean, right now, and he's here physically to do this episode. So James is an expert in procurement technology space. This is his main game. He runs a website called procurementsoftware.site. Correct. Yeah. And where he basically recommends software, you can filter by category like procure to pay, marketplace, uh, analytics, so on and so forth. Which I'm sure James will explain more in detail, right? And James is only one of the very few people who can actually put a, a topless picture on LinkedIn and get away with it. Right? But that's the that's the introduction of James. James, pleasure to have you away. And thanks for wearing that into your T-shirt, man. Yes. You, you look awesome. You could be, he could be a model for us, right? So anyway, so tell us what you're doing in Dubai and what's happening in your in your procurement tech space. By the way, having said that, the today's topic is the evolution of the procurement tech uh, overall and what's the future. Because I believe, right, that procurement tech, if you think about digital marketing or fintech, we are about decade and a half behind, right? So start with your journey. What what do you think? Yeah, first of all, thank you for having me. Great to be here. I'm actually doing uh, a, a bit of freelance consulting at the moment with uh, with a client that's based out here in the uh, in the Emirates to to give myself some runway to grow my business while I'm doing further. So, yeah, so many places to start, and where, where do we break that down? So, procurement tech being ten years behind, I, I think I think you're kind of right. It is, and I think the reason for that is just that. Procurement technology typically hasn't really had anyone in the C-suite or in uh, or in the boardroom really really fighting for it because other than in some big sort of consumer goods industrial manufacturing businesses, typically procurement doesn't have. And I hate the term, but this is the seat at the table. But and we don't necessarily need that seat at the table, but we certainly need someone to fight for and put forward the case for why procurement needs to have good technology. And the reason why procurement needs good technology is, as we're seeing now in a very inflationary environment, good procurement decisions and good procurement data can hit both the top top line growth and, and bottom line you know, profit and loss impact. So I think, yes, you're right. It, it has definitely lagged behind, especially when you look at sales and marketing tech and FinTech. Uh, even HR has had quite a lot of tech investment compared to procurement. Um, Part of that, I think, yes, some of the old technology is a little bit clunky and is difficult to use and takes a long time to implement. That's certainly influenced it. But we are now starting to see, thankfully, a lot of really cool best of breed software solutions coming out that, that have a great UX and that are pretty easy to implement and that, and that don't cross the earth. I mean, there are some that use the latest cutting te edge technology that that is quite expensive, but if you are now a mid-sized business or maybe you're in an emerging market and you can't afford you know, North American or European enterprise software solutions, there are pieces of tech out there now that, that very much focus on that market. And that's really what I try to do because I genuinely see that's where the growth is going to be. You know, all Fortune 500 companies have done digital transformation to some extent. Yeah. Some, some of them have done it badly, as we know. <laughs> And you know it's a very bureaucratic and lengthy process getting anything done in an enterprise company, but all of them have done to some degree. You know they might have implemented one of these big legacy suites and said, okay, right, that's done. Next, 
but all of them have done something. Whereas if you go down to the mid market, if you go down to say a $200 million or Euro business, or if you look to manufacturing businesses in emerging markets, you know, if you look a little bit further outside of UAE, there's a lot of emerging markets in this region, you know, Egypt, Pakistan, Turkey, India, India, and those businesses, even the larger businesses there probably haven't done much because obviously labor is cheaper there and yeah. there's less of a business case then to automate something like P2P. But if you, if you get into things like analytics and, and some of the smarter tech that's coming out there now and how that can add value to the business that's being implemented in, in terms of visibility, in terms of enhancing the data, you know, that's where other than the bare bones of getting P2P and getting contract management right, that's you know where we can now move the needle, which historically would have been either a big consulting project or a very hefty investment. And that's not necessarily any longer the case. So I'm going to give you now the, few, the following conversation break into three parts. The first is, you mentioned about this procurement digitalization, which is the whole software tech thing. So I'm going to say, first question would be, okay, People trying to do that without actually focusing on two things, which is process standardization and building a capability. Because I have seen, uh, without naming some big companies in Middle East and Africa, they spent a lot of money, they bought one of the biggest software, spent about more than half a million dollars. 18 months later, they're blaming the software, which they paid a lot of money, and the consultant put it together a million dollars. They're saying the software, but actually, none of this is the adoption within the company was so slow that they didn't, they didn't see the ROI, right? The reason it was so slow in my experience because they haven't really put focus on developing the competencies of the people, right? So how do you see that these two things balancing out? Yeah, it's a great question. So I'll, I'll break it down into two points. I think the change management journey and ensuring that your employees and your team are on that journey is absolutely vital. But then I also do think that the software or the choice of software has some role to play in that because you can have the best change management policy and bring people on board and do podcasts and videos and flyers and really cool content marketing stuff like, like we do for what we do for YouTube and podcasting and everything. But if the software is really hard to use and it doesn't give you the same experience as you would have in the business to consumer space, like when you go and purchase something off an e-commerce store as a consumer, then you're still going to struggle to get people to adopt that. So I do think it's a fair criticism from the software companies sometimes when they say, you know, the reason your digital transformation has failed is because you haven't taken your people with you. Yes, up to a point. But if your software is clunky and it takes a year to implement and it's not designed well and it doesn't give that nice user flow, yeah. then outside of core functions that are going to use it, like procurement and finance, you know, it's fine if you're using something like a spend analytics tool and it's quite difficult to use, it's not as big of a deal because only procurement and finance are going to use it. Mm -hmm. If you're implementing a procure to pay or a, or, or a contract management platform, mm -hmm. then you're going to have the wider stakeholder community that are just going to be sort of casual users of that, you know, the, think of the maintenance engineer that needs to order some spare parts a couple of times a month, or, you know, think of the office assistant that needs to order stationery. They're, they're not going to be in that tool every single day, living yeah. and breathing it. Yeah. So it has to have a reasonable level of intu in, in, intuitiveness and, and a smooth user experience to get, to get those people on board. So it is a fair criticism, but only up to a certain point, I would say. Good, very, very, very good response. It shows your, shows your experience as well. So well, the second thing I see right now, again, post COVID scenario, right? So whole thing, procurement supply chain is an issue, billions of VC money goes in, and what happened in, I think if you think about 2008, financial uh, recession, a lot of big companies was born, like Airbnb, Uber, and all that, right? And I think COVID is almost like that recession, which uh, uh, supply chain needed, to kick up the back up, basically, you know, basically and, and get the boost. People, okay, the boost has happened. People realize that one of the biggest problem. So when there's a problem, the entrepreneur and the, and the people with the money, they say, let's put some money in. That's great. Now, the startups in procurement space or supply chain space coming out like mushrooms, okay? But the, the challenge I see, and if, I, if even we go to procurement side, if you go a guy, you go and have a look at what, what James has done in his team, his great website. 
that within one space, let's pick procure to pay, you've got 30 different software companies, right? If you think about uh, contract management, you've got about like 20 different countries, you know. More than that, yeah, you've got 45, 45 yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> the data in some way so, or some so, way. So, shape so, so think yeah. there is a huge amount of, let's call it, duplication. So, so the software functionality for me is becoming a, a, a commodity, therefore the differentiation is getting very difficult. So that's first part A of my question. But my part B of my question, which is actually again a criticism is, see, if you even go and different functionality of different part of the procurement have different kind of software applications, and you've got so many software vendors, but procurement is again a subsection of the total supply chain. If you think about, okay, the supply chain part, which is you've got demand planning, inventory analytics, then you've got, let's call it procurement function, and then you've got logistic function. Then if I'm a sub supply chain manager director, I really don't want to use five different software to manage my end-to-end -end supply chain, right? So that's yeah. my part B. So start with this whole, let's call it vendor, you know, mushroom-like product. You know, people are entering into the software space, and then why would I want to have five different software? I just want one suite and doing all the apps, basically. That's what I would want. Yeah, so if you want one suite, there are suites out there on the marketplace that can give you that. The problem with all of them is that no one single suite will do everything. Right. And what you typically find is that most suites will do a lot of what you want it to do reasonably average. So well, even there's nothing if, wrong with that. And, and no, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with it if that's what you if you want to have a consolidate, if you want to have everything under one roof, then a suite will cover in most cases 70-80% of what you need to do, but it won't cover everything. So the argument to say that bringing in a suite will will mean that you only need to use one software app, uh, I'm afraid is a bit of a fallacy. Okay. It will get you most of the way there, but you're still gonna need, I mean, suites are all, are all the same. They tend to not do certain things, all of them particularly well. So supplier relationship management, contract management, advanced data analytics to look at supply chain risk or, or, to, or to do advanced spend analytics. No, none of these big all-in-one suites has a good spend analytics module, which is why you know some of the big spend analytics providers have managed to sell their software in companies that are running something like Cooper or SAP Ariba or GEP, because none of them have an advanced spend analytics module. Their salespeople can say that like they, they do, but when you ask a practitioner, I think they will all say that the spend analytics module and also contract management, any sort of risk management, sustainability, ESG, any type, any any of any of all of this stuff that's coming on board now that's increasing in importance in especially in large corporates, it doesn't do particularly well. So yes, you can do that as a start, but you know, and, and now certainly some of the bigger ones have incorporated app stores. You know, certainly Ariba and Cooper have marketplaces where you can then Add on, build on, your a bit, build on you know, the, ba the basis, the platform as a suite, um, but none of them will be able to cover everything that you need. So I guess then it's more of a, it's more of a strategic question or a, uh, or a personal preference question. Do you want to have that as a platform and build on it, or or do you want to have something like a vendor vendor master data platform, something like a Tealbook or a Scalpy as your platform instead? and then build something like P2P, source to contract, and all of the other sort of more niche things on, on top of that. I think he, going back to the spider diagram that Dr. Eloise Epstein is so famous for, I think you do need a platform, but should it be one of these legacy suites as a platform? I would argue the case, probably not, but there's always someone that will argue so, against So that. your recommendation is, have five different software to manage your procurement supply chain function. Is that what you're saying? I think most businesses above a certain size will probably need at least three. Like, and then tell me three. You'll need you'll need a procure to pay platform. Yeah. You'll need some sort of e-sourcing and contract management pl platform. Right. And depending on how dirty your data is, you'll probably need. And you, once you're getting into sort of bigger companies, you probably need a spend analytics platform as well. But that's then, procurement. Of that, that's procurement. And then you go into supply chain and then, yeah, you've got your inventory management, you've got your transportation. Demand yeah. planning, inventory optimization, right. which is generally what I see. So if you pick the three, which you mentioned very smartly, pretty cool. I think there's some very cool software available, which does all three to a certain extent without naming them. Uh, but there's one very niche ones. Then you move to this whole, you know, demand planning, inventory optimization and inventory planning, or let's call it SNOP comes into that, you know, like 
we have uh, yeah. Slim Store, Net, NetSuite, and all that. And then you move to the whole logistics digitalization platform, which is basically once you management starting from, I think most ERP have WMS, so it's all in ERP. Because remember this, ERP is we give it right now. You haven't really mentioned ERP because you're just assuming you have a, you have to have an yeah. ERP to build to buy the three. Let's platform. not get confused. ERP systems are not procurement or supply chain. Yeah, yeah, you go. <laughs> They're basically finance systems, right? They are data interrelational database. Basically, yeah. that's what they are. You can pick any of them actually. Start from the very small to very high. So, so that's ERP is there. Then the three let's call it programs, which meant so platform mentioned by 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 James. Then your demand planning, inventory optimization, and then your basically logistics one. So to run a supply chain right now, so the message I'm trying to give is following: to run your supply chain right now, it's going to get intricate and complicated if you want to digitalize, right? I think that's the the, the game here. It's not going to get easy before we get mature enough that to the level of fintech or digital marketing where the software is easy enough, detailed enough, with a lot of functionality used. But I think we are, this is the journey we have to take. What do you think? Dave? No, I think that's definitely true. And I think part of it is starting at the beginning and say, you know, what what's the end game that you have in mind? You know, if you're if you're importing a lot of commodities from from fairly geopolitically unstable markets, yeah. then you probably need a good risk management tool and a good, you know, tra transportation tracking, customs yeah. clearance piece of tech on the supply chain side. If you're if you're an insurance company, then you probably don't need something that tracks the price of raw materials or that or, or that does deep supply chain analytics. So it's it's always thinking starting with the end in mind. You know, what's your end goal? Or even or even you know taking away industry specific sectors. What is your goal? Are you looking to reduce headcount and, and automate a lot of administrative work? Are you looking for it to drive bottom line savings? Are you looking for it to, to, to protect you in terms of risk management, especially if your brand could quite be easily, be easily exposed to scandals when you look at some of these textile industry scandals that came yeah. out over the past couple of years, child labor, all that type of thing. So start with the end in mind. Where do you want to be? What's your biggest challenge? And start there because if you don't really know that and you're just implementing a suite because someone was featured in a magazine that did it from a big enterprise level organization, that's probably the worst possible thing you can do because they've got the resources and the money to employ an army of consultants to do it. If you're not a large business, then you don't have that or I doubt that you have that. Okay, so let's move, before I move to the future and the end part, I want to slip this question of uh, SMBs. Right, because I think SMBs is the is growing. It's going to grow more. Because it's getting very difficult for big organization to maintain a big headcount and the and the and, and, and to do it right. Uh, light will come in. That's good, right? Uh, so, what would be the your recommendation to the SMBs? Let's call it our distribution companies or or SMBs yeah. manufacturing, which is now the game. If you see the Middle East and Africa. Right, it's all about distribution. It is not much manufacturing as such. I mean, there's some agri agriculture, there's some yeah. textiles, but it's mainly about buying the big stuff from you know like best cost countries and trading it up, right? So therefore, they need some kind of procurement suites. Or so, what you would what do you recommend there to them? Well, I personally think the next, the biggest growth in procurement technology is going to be for smaller businesses and in emerging markets simply because that's the area that's still very green field you know it's only the real innovators that are small and medium-sized businesses or that are in emerging markets that have really taken digitization and, and pushed it forward i mean i touched on earlier that pretty much every enterprise company has has done some degree of digitization even if they've done it badly and digitalization if you look at the end-to-end -end process so I think, I mean, if I was, if I was a startup founder and I was looking, you know, where's the biggest growth potential in this, in this sphere, I would say, make it something that's relatively easily productized, that you can run on a mobile app, that you can have seat based pricing that costs something that every small and medium sized enterprise can afford and, and make it easy to gain new customers because, you know, beyond the real innovators in the enterprise space. You know, not everyone is going out there buying all of these best of breed apps. So, you know, anyone that's focused on enterprise as a sales strategy, I think will will struggle in the in, in the months and years to come. And I think there'll be a lot more acquisition in this space. So, if you're running a small, medium sized distribution company or logistics company, and you're looking to get something like your freight procurement under under control, 
there are ways that you can digitize your sourcing and your invoicing pretty cheaply. You know, if you've got, yeah, I mean, if you've got a, if you've got a budget of ten, twenty thousand dollars, you could you could easily get some bare bones tech that will do that and take a lot of administrative work away. And you know, there are too many to name, but there are a lot. There, there are a lot of companies that are in procure to pay, contract management, sourcing. Um, that can that, that can do that type of thing at an affordable price. If you go to procurementsoftware.site uh, and either look at the niche category specific solutions or something common like contract management or procure to pay, uh, and filter on the ones that are targeting uh, SMEs or mid-sized businesses, you'll find a plethora of them. It's not just enterprise software that's uh, that's playing in this space now. Okay, so uh, a bit uh, out of the box question, right? Not all of both with the future light. So if you see most of those, apart from the software, which is has a database search, like finding a supplies and all that, which depends on the database, which I think we can discuss after this chat, because I have an idea of this. Uh, most of you say the procurement uh, to pay software, even contract management apps, uh, they are essentially a workflow coded in a software, right? There's a sequence of you know RFI, RFI, RFQ, RFPs, then BO generation, get paid and invoice. You pick them, they have a certain workflows. Okay? Yeah. Uh, with some additional functionality, some better notification, a bit of AI, whatever, right? Same with contact management, same with other. But I'm I'm talking procurement only, right? I'm talking procurement specifically, not logistics, not not supply chain planning, because that's that's different ballgame. So my argument here is if that there is also an advent of a no code workflow platforms, right? For example, the um, uh, Google have one, right? They call it AppSheet, okay? Uh, there is a power automate by Microsoft. There is a company called Vagrello I've been consulting, they're creating workflow. There is called Process Suite.ai. I mean, I can name it. Which is a no code workflow platform because what they all claim and do to a large extent that you can, you can pick any of your current workflow and you can use this no-code workflow platform and almost automate that, including the approval, including the collaboration outside the organization, including data transfer. So my argument is, why would I go and buy those 30 different procure to pay software when I can use one of those no-code workflow platform and design it myself? You need to have the in-house expertise to be able to design, to, to design it yourself. And large companies typically would have that, but would, would, your, average, would your average SME? I mean, it, I think you've got to make it, even as, I mean, as a solopreneur myself, even something like Zapier, which is you know, to the masses, low code, no code, workflow, automation, or, or, or automation platform, it's too complicated for me. Yeah. I don't really understand it. You know, uh, okay, I'm not a maths person and I openly admit that, but anyone that's not a coder, I think would perhaps yeah. struggle a little bit with that unless they you know, really got under the hood of it and took some time out to learn it. So. But if they it's, learn it, possibly. If, right? if they learn it, yeah. I mean, we're in we're in the early days, right? Yeah. It's still it's still very much in the early days. But I saw I saw a no, I saw a low code um, procurement category management yeah. tool um, that's been developed by by a gentleman in Denmark, and it's still very early stage. But I think that's got potential because it does bring something like a category strategy process, right. which typically most smaller businesses would not have the time or the resource or the capabilities to do, and makes it right. very very simple. And affordable. So, I, in, in, in answer to your question, I think it's definitely yes, but we're probably three to five years away from seeing mass adoption of that. Certainly, that's my my suspicion. Last selfish question for the audience. So, I said to you, I said to you, we got about you know forty thousand visitors. We got big community of following, got two months followers as well. You know, twenty five thousand email users, subscribers. So, we got we got that. Everybody thinks we are like academic knowledge base, which we are. You know, we got some assessment tools and all this. So, if we have to develop an app for our community, which one we should do? That's a great question. So bearing in mind that you're bearing in mind that you're very much focused on supply chain. Yes. That was, you yeah. some nice blogs of procurement and content that's, coaches that's, and everything. Yeah, that's difficult. I would have said anything that can anything that can track transportation and then automatically perform a GR and do some sort of three-way matching on the invoice. I think that's something, I mean, I know there are platforms out there that can do it, but they're more focused on procurement, where if you've got something that can track the shipment, that can integrate somehow with customs brokers and perform the GR when the goods get in there and then automate the invoice, 
pay, uh, payment process. But that's a very niche problem. That's like that, super niche problem. It is. Most manufacturing companies have that issue, right? Yes, Especially yes. if they're importing. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. And it's something that I, I don't know. I've always spent a lot of time on in the past, just doing. Yeah. Doing that manually. Invoice so, approval for logistics people, yeah. Yeah, and just knowing where, yeah, where are my parts. I mean, yeah. I know, I know, there, I know there are sensor tracking technologies that do that. But yeah, supply chain is a difficult one to estimate because I'm, I'm not, I'm not an expert in this space. Procurement's my, my beer, but yeah. No, sir, sir, he's, 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 I think I need to pay him for that. But we'll see, we'll see what. <laughs> no, okay, James, final thoughts. Final thoughts, yeah. You know, I really think this is a. a, a area of tech that's going to blossom over the coming years, but more so in the simple solutions that serve SMEs and serve emerging markets and, and that can be bought as a service rather than an enterprise software package. Great. James, thank you for having with us, right? What you do and uh, especially your content on LinkedIn is growing. I thank you for having me on your podcast because you have a po podcast yourself, right? And, uh, yeah, it's called the Procure Tech Podcast and Modacio was my guest on yeah. Series 3, Episode 6, talking exactly. about supply chain content and training. So go and check out the podcast, right? Because if you want interest, interest in to become a tech, because I think you're the only one of the two people who does it, right? I think you have one competition. I'm not going to name it, because, but there is one. Uh, but thank, thank you for joining and go and follow James on LinkedIn and Pick Up Tech Podcast. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having Appreciate me. It. Cheers. Guys, so if you like what we're doing, again, as we said, thank you for watching and like, share, and subscribe. Keep it simple and keep it real. Ciao.